Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to the video. And uh, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. I'm not a very good pilot. I'm not a very good pilot. I can't be a very good pilot because you're looking at five quads here and not a single one of them fly. Um, several of them have been crashed and no longer function. One of them hasn't flown from the get-go. We're going to figure that out as well. But uh, let me go ahead and preface the video by saying that uh, I'm just a tick pass beginner level. So if I miss an easy fix or whatever, no need to rail me in the comments. Just go ahead and pipe in and share your fix. But from a beginner standpoint, I'm going to take a look at these things and see if I can't get each and every single one of them back in the air. That is the challenge. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to do safety first and get the props off the ones that have props on them. And then I'm going to pick one at random and we are going to go for it. We're going to see if uh, we can't get this thing fixed. All right. Taking a look at our first victim, uh, our radio is turned on and we're going to go ahead and plug him in and see what's going on. Telemetry All right. So we've got telemetry. I'm going to go ahead and move this aside actually just a little bit. And uh, let me go ahead and throw my switch for arm. And if you can see in the video, three out of four of the motors are spinning. This guy is completely dead. Completely dead. Okay. All right. So right off of the bat, you've probably noticed that this has four separate ESCs. So uh, it could be an ESC problem, but it could be a motor problem. Um, so let's try to diagnose even further. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and take the top off. But if I tilt the quad a little bit, it's going to be very easy for you to see what the problem is. I will end the suspense because I know you're sitting at the edge of your seat. But this little wire right here, look at that. That's pretty easy to diagnose as to why that motor's not working. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this top off and uh, take a closer look. All right, upon closer inspection, we can see that our wire is sticking up in the air as opposed to being connected where it's supposed to be connected, somewhere around right there. Hard for me to see, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, desolder this pad and uh, put some fresh solder on both the wire and the pad and then solder it back up and see if that fixes our problem. All right, so because I um, did some soldering, what I want to do is I want to recheck to make sure that I don't have any shorts in the system, uh, make sure I didn't do anything stupid. So what I'm going to do is I've got the, I have the multimeter set to continuity mode and I'm going to go ahead and check my connections. Nothing there. That is supposed to beep. That's supposed to beep, but red to black. Red to black, no beeps, that's good. So the real deal is that I don't trust myself, so not only do I do a continuity test after I solder, um, but when I go ahead and plug back in, I'm gonna go ahead and use my smoke stopper. Overkill, maybe, but it beats frying a $50 board or whatever it cost. So there is my smoke stopper, plug her in. Everything seems as normal. All right, so everything plugged in without exploding. And now that I've tested with my smoke stopper, I'm going to go ahead and go for real this time. And let's see if we've got four motors. We've got four motors. All right, so I'm pretty sure this one will fly, but uh, we'll get back to that. We'll uh, go outside and take a test flight. Oh, yeah. And we're good with quad number one. All right, so let's take a look at problem child number two. Uh, our radio is on, and let's go ahead and see what happens if we fire this little guy up. All right, obviously the roof has been taken off uh, for easier access, and uh, we are fired up, and the radio is connected, and let me go ahead and arm. Uh-oh. What we've got are two motors spinning perfectly on this side and two motors not spinning so perfectly on the other side. If we pick this guy up right here and take a closer look, this is what we see. 
All right, so this first guy right here, I've got him upside down. I think the uh, diagnosis here is pretty obvious. I have no idea in the world how this gets wired back up. So it is $9 for a new motor. Uh, so this one's pretty obvious as to what the deal is. This thing took a very, very hard crash. Um, moving over to the next one, if I try to arm, he jumps around a little bit and it like he's trying to do stuff but he's not really doing stuff and if we take a closer look at him he does not appear to have the same issue as the other one we're connected uh, in three places here and we're connected in all three soldering points here as well now I don't know whether this is right or not, but I've always been under the impression that uh, if uh, the motor moves at all, that means that the ESC is functional. Uh, hopefully somebody who knows more than I do will comment as to whether that's a true or false statement. I'm hoping that the ESCs are okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and replace both motors and see what happens. Okay, so I took the liberty of getting a couple of these Emacs uh, RX series motors. These are uh, direct matches for the originals. They're 1103 7000 KVs. So I'll go ahead and attempt to get these soldering on there and see what happens. All right, so we've got our Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2 back together again. Um, we've rewired motors, which means that there's a pretty good chance that we got the motors going in the wrong direction so the first thing I want to do is try to figure out if the motors are spinning correctly well if they're spinning at all for one thing so I'm gonna go ahead and plug her back in my radio is already on all right so let's see what we got here if we got lucky I don't even remember which motors we did but I'm just gonna check them all all right this guy he he is going in the correct direction. He's going in the correct direction. Not the correct direction. Not the correct direction. So we got 50% of them. So you're going to want to fire up Beta Flight and BL Heli. In this case, it's going to be BL Heli S, not BL Heli 32. And let's see here. Beta Flight connected immediately. So I want to make sure I disconnect Beta Flight. And now I got BL Heli. All right, so what I've got, i got a problem with three and four. So I'm going to go to three and four and motor direction. I'm going to change that to reverse. And I'm going to go ahead and say right setup. Like so. ESC, right, OK. All right, so I'm going to select, make sure that four is selected only. And I'm going to make this reversed. And I'm going to say right setup. ESC, four, right, OK. So now what I can do is I can say read setup and good. And then what I want to do is I want to look at the overview. And if you can see, so three is reversed and four is reversed. So that's good. It's good. Can go to motors. Telemetry recovered. Say I understand the risk. Make sure that your props are not on and go to three. This is three right here. And three is now spinning clockwise. No, counterclockwise counterclockwise four is clockwise all right so okay so with the motors traveling in the right direction and uh, I just real quickly went through my pre-flight checklist this thing is ready for props and ready for a test flight oh. I'm good. I'm going to move on to the next quad. All right, so you just saw the footage of the quad on the floor, and it didn't even have a chance of getting up off the ground, uh, which is pretty common problem and the thing is is that when you get used to beta flight and you start to memorize the way things are we've kind of got it written down here whereas one and four are going clockwise and two and three are going counterclockwise I've got my props on correct here uh, with the leading edges of my props being the high end and you know essentially normally they're gonna spin like this okay and then like likewise they're gonna spin like this 
All right. Um, and, and it would seem that everything was right. But let's plug this guy in to beta flight and take a closer look. So if we take this guy and we plug him in, this is the, um, this is the happy model crux three, right? And we got an old happy model crux three and we're going to go to configuration and take a look. The motors are reversed for whatever reason they're reversed. So essentially uh, we couldn't be more wrong with our propellers. Okay. With our propeller going this way, we need to make absolutely positively sure that we follow the directions exactly as they were intended. So all four of these props need to come off. Beta flight. This guy is supposed to be spinning like this. All right. He is with the, with the high end of the prop on the leading edge. He's spinning like this. This guy's going to spin the same way. High end. This guy is going to spin this way with the high end on the leading edge. And this guy is going to spin this way with the high end on the leading edge. Let's go ahead and go back over to the floor and see if this thing will fly. A little better. All right, here we are. We are a quad four. Quad four is problem. I uh, got the radio in front of me. Got the quad in front of me. And I'm going to go ahead and give the quad some power. And let's take a look at what the problem is with this one. This is uh, this is another case where the uh, quad has crashed. So plugged it in and nothing. Plugged it in and nothing. No connection. If you take a close look. If you take a close look right here, uh, these two guys are not talking to each other. And a lot of times they won't talk to each other if they're this close. But even if I pull this guy far away, um, they just ain't talking to each other. Just not happening. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot what happened in this crash. All right. So taking a closer look at this crash victim, uh, and I'm noticing that uh, I don't see any receiver antenna coming out the back of the quad. So here's our problem right here. Our antennas uh, have a lifted away from the uh, FR sky R X S R. So we've lifted completely away uh, and they're gone. They're nowhere to be found. All right. So what I'm going to do is I've got some spares right here. Always have spares. These are very, very cheap. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, Take this plate off and get access to the receiver and um, put some new antenna on it and then rebind it. All right, so with the uh, receiver flipped upside down, you can see where uh, the antenna was ripped clean off right here and right here. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those with some that I have on hand and uh, I'm going to go ahead and fix this back up to that and then uh, rebind. All right. So I've got the, uh, I've got the antenna back on and I bound it uh, off camera and now I'm just going to go ahead and go like that. And we're good to go. We got a solid green light on the receiver. Everything else looks good. The radio itself. There it is. It has, we've got bars again. All right, so we're good to go here. I am going to put everything back together and uh, take this one through my beta flight pre-flight checklist and see if we can't get this one off the ground. Flies beautifully. All right, I save this little guy for last because I'm anticipating that this is going to be the hardest one to fix. So this is my Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 uh, race. You probably recognize it more with its little shell on there like that. So that's what he normally looks like. So we're going to pull him off, get down to the guts. 
Okay, so the deal on this one is that, well, the short story is that it went full speed straight into concrete. And when I plug it in, all I get is this faint little light. I'm not sure whether you can see it or not. There it is, a little faint little light right there. So I've, I've run a number of other tests. I mean, the uh, it won't bind anymore. Um, obviously, the receiver doesn't do anything. Uh, I tried... I don't know whether this is a thing or not, but I tried going into BL Heli and seeing if it would recognize the ESCs. It doesn't recognize the ESCs. So based on that, I'm just going to have to make a determination that I broke the board. So uh, what do you do when you completely break a board and you love the performance of the little quad? Well, you get another one. That's exactly what I did. So what I'm going to do with this new board is uh, obviously I have to desolder uh, 12 um, solder points for the motors and resolder them back on. And what's going to happen when I solder them back on is uh, that the motors aren't all necessarily going to be facing the right direction, which is going to lead to uh, our fifth problem is uh, that when you try to fly with motors going in the wrong direction, um, the following happens. All right, so there it is, five solutions to five problems that I've had with my quads of recent. Four of them were uh, a result of crashes, and one of them was a result of just doing something incorrectly. I hope that you found the video valuable. Uh, if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you found it really valuable, please do me a favor, share on social media. Tell people that I'm making videos about quads. I'm Steve, I'm gonna sign off for now. But for those of you who know the channel, you'll know that I'm going to start working on another video right away. So till the next one, I'll see you.